I can't believe I'm doing this video, but the Cybertruck might actually start to be made this year in the year of 2023. And historically, what I have really enjoyed doing is looking at the data behind how some of these vehicles are coming to market. So the big question I have around Cybertruck though is how many can they actually make from that one factory? And will we see anybody get it this year besides employees? Luckily, we have some data, we have some historical precedent, and we have the maths on our side. Let's get into it. Okay, so the way technology gets adopted is through this concept called the diffusion of innovation. There's a great book that also goes further talking about crossing the chasm where you have essentially early adopters who I say will put up with your BS and then the majority of people who won't. And that chasm is the tough one to cross. But once you get there, that's when things really adopt. Think about the iPhone, how it started out as a niche product and everyone was like, oh, there's no keyboard and no business user will ever buy it, blah, blah, blah. Everyone loved black at the time. And now you look and you go, well, basically everyone has an iPhone or something that basically looks identical to an iPhone. So how do they make that adoption? How do they cross that chasm? How do they do that? Well, there is math that we can use here. So the diffusion of innovation has these different stages. You have the innovators, the early adopters, then you have the early majority, then late majority, and then laggards. And if you draw that out, the total adoption, it looks like the letter S. It's called an S curve. Now, if you want to actually plot that and use a formula or an algorithm, if you want to call it that, in order to actually me measure this and, and see how it's going to go, that's called the Perl curve. This is a logistic function that is a measure of growth. In this case, let's say the diffusion of a technology or in Tesla's case with Cybertruck, the, the production of a new vehicle. And this Perl curve, which we use the sigmoid function, if you want to get technical about it, this is where the, the ramp up and and the, the, the peak where it's actually gonna hit its max are the same. They work at the same exact rate. And it really looks nice and smooth. Of course, the world isn't exactly like that, right? It, it's not like, oh, it's really, really hard to get going, and then those last few also take the um, same amount of time. Usually there's some unevenness between how long it takes to get going versus how you know that last 10% takes to achieve. And that's where we have something called the Gompertz curve. I hope I'm saying that right. And this is another sigmoid function. And the idea here is you're measuring growth or diffusion or a production of, of a vehicle. And in this case, what we're looking at is where the acceleration and deceleration are asymmetrical. Now this is a different way of looking at it, but I think it's more realistic. And if you look back at how Tesla brought the Model 3 to production, that's essentially what we saw, right? It was really, really slow going and then bang, exponential growth. Elon talks about it all the time. It's hard to estimate. It's not that hard over the long period, but in the short run, it's very difficult to get week by week what's gonna happen, especially you know when there's supply chain issues or you're bringing up a new factory or back in the Model 3 days, Tesla was like learning how to make mass production vehicles, right? Prior to that, all, everything they made was really small numbers in, in comparison. So now that they've got that under their belt and they have this brand new factory in Texas they're working on, the question is, how is it gonna look for Cybertruck? And I actually was able to run these numbers back when the Model 3 was coming online, and I was able to do it very close to what the actual numbers were. So I only had a couple data points using this math here, this algorithm, I was able to plot out exactly how many they were gonna make, and I was only off by a couple percent, which having very little data at the time, I felt was a pretty good result. So I basically went back to that algorithm, looked at our current situation here with the Texas factory and what they're trying to do there, some data points we have and I'm trying to plot that and just do my job to do the best guess or best prediction I can put out there for how many cyber trucks Tesla is going to make this year and for the next few years going forward. And in this video, you know, one thing you're going to notice about all these charts and graphs is that I'm sort of showing you the behind the scenes. I'm showing you the actual tools and software I use to come up with these insights. It's the same thing that I did for companies for about 20 years in my career when I worked in tech before I went out on my own. And it's also what I teach at Free the Data Academy. Free the Data Academy is my online academy for people that want to learn how to elevate their careers with upskilling in the realm of data. It is the way to learn 
learn how to work with data to make sense of it, to provide insights to your business, to your customers, and then use that data to make better decisions. Because when you have data informed decisions, generally those are going to lead to better results, whatever that may be for you or your company. And we've actually just achieved over 2 million students at Free the Data Academy. And I never thought when I started this all the way back in 2013 that it would grow to this, but it's been so great. And so I'm saying all this because today I want to help you get your feet wet in the realm of data if you've ever had an inkling there and you can do it for free. So if you head over to ftdacademy.com slash dash 30, what you'll get is a 30 minute course that teaches you how to take data from a spreadsheet and build an interactive dashboard. This is the exact same kind of thing that you can use in a professional setting. This isn't some kind of perfect example, whatever. It's really working with actual data, coming up with the insights and building a dashboard. It all takes 30 minutes and it's absolutely for free. And I just want to do this because I want everybody out there to have the opportunity to understand the power it is to know how to work with data. So head over to ftdacademy.com slash dash 30. Check it out. No harm, no foul if you're not interested, but I really wanted to offer it up to you guys in case you had any interest in elevating your existing career or even switching careers and going into the world of data analysis, data science. So that's why you're going to see a lot more of the raw behind the scenes takes in this video versus some of the other ones that you've maybe seen me do before. The first question, the first variable we need in our equation is when is production going to start? Elon has said for many times now that, oh, it'll be in two weeks or it'll be next year or this year and all that. But it looks like the consensus from my friends that are much more in tune with the Tesla community than I am at this point, they all think that this summer, so I'm saying mid-July is when I'm actually putting down as when the production is going to start here. So of course that's gonna change things if they don't actually start on time. But this curve and this ramp I think will be fairly representative. It'll just shift one way or the other. And the next variable we need is how many can you possibly make? So if you have one factory with one line, presumably Tesla's much better at making things now than they were back in 2018 with the Model 3, but it's a bigger vehicle, there's a lot of other variables there. How many can you possibly imagine producing from that one line you have going? Well, a couple years ago, my friend Ryan McCaffrey got to ask Elon Musk that exact question. Uh, curious about Cybertruck, it was interesting to see where you had it in on the battery technology front. I'm sort of curious what you see for it in the production front. Is its volume, you know, trucks are so popular in America, do you see its volume equaling the three or the Y in the future? Well, it's hard to say what the volume exactly would be for the Cybertruck. The, the orders are gigantic. So and we have like, I don't know, well over half a million orders. I think maybe six or 600,000. That's a lot, basically. We stopped counting. Um, so I, I think there's probably room for, I don't know, at least like a unit volume of like 250 to 300,000 a year, maybe more. Okay, so that gives us essentially our bounds, right? We know when we're starting, we know we're starting at zero, and then we know we're gonna hit, let's say 5,000 total per week. That would give you about 250 plus thousand a year, right? Depending if they take any time off for maintenance or you know, holidays or anything else. So we'll call it 5,000 a week just to make the math simple for us. And we're starting with zero in July. Okay, so first up we have our sigmoid function. This is the Perl curve. This is the one where the acceleration and deceleration are of the same rate. Here what we're seeing is that we start out in July. You can see it slowly ramp up to where we're hitting early January 2024 where they're making almost a thousand per week. And then you can go all the way up to 2025. You can see that number really start to climb there late 2024, where right when we're early 2025, we're making about 4,000 Cybertrucks per week. Then you have the deceleration, right? This is sort of the max acceleration, the max exponential growth. But now that we have that curve to go off, that prediction, we can actually use that to ask a few more questions here. First, how many per year will they make? Well, if that math was correct, we would be looking at just under 13,000 Cybertrucks in 2023. That's a lot, I think. Then 2024, we're at about 127,000. 2025, we're essentially hitting uh, peak production, essentially almost 250,000. And then 2026, just a little bit more than the 250,000. Remember, it's 5,000 a week, 52 weeks, something like that. So that's essentially what the sigmoid function gives us. Now, if we look at the Gompertz curve, it's gonna give us a little bit different results. And this is where I think things might actually be a little bit more accurate. You can see that the curve is much steeper to start, meaning production ramps up super quick, and then the deceleration is actually quite small as well. So 
Here we're going to get different results. If we look at the yearly production using the Gompertz curve, we're only saying that there's just over 5,000 Cybertrucks produced in 2023. That seems like a much more realistic number to me, but we'll see how it goes. And then 2024, we're actually above the S curve at 144,000. Then 2025 and beyond, we're essentially at peak production, just right around 250,000. Again, that's just what we know of now. That's the best guess from one factory with one line. Of course, it could produce more than that. They could have multiple lines. They're spinning up new factories all the time. Who knows what the future holds, but using the, the variables we know now and saying that these are, you know, fact, then we can use that to make these predictions. And then it gets interesting because I think we can take this look at total production. So total production using the sigmoid function, the S curve, we're looking in 2026 at about 639,000 Cybertrucks produced. That is a lot of Cybertrucks out there. Using the Gompertz calculation, we get a slightly different number. We're looking at 600 and 55,000. So you can see that it's kind of interesting. The initial estimate for the first year using the S curve is more than double what the Gompertz is, but then in a few years time, the actual Gompertz one oh, passes the, the Perl curve, the, the sigmoid function. So you're looking at it as like, okay, well, that is the variable we really can't predict is, is it gonna ramp up faster or is it gonna ramp down faster? We don't know that yet. Looking at history, we can see that things do ramp up super quick, but then they usually tend to change a lot of things and you know that messes up the rest of the calculation. But there is essentially using a fair amount of math what I think I'm confident saying is going to be the amount of cyber trucks that they produce, assuming that they start on time in July and they only have that one line in Texas. But of course you have to understand the cyber truck and what the hype is about it in order to even care about these numbers. So if you've watched this far, you have to go watch this video here where I actually got to ride in the cyber truck and see exactly what that's like. That's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.